Hi everybody from Team EACD, this is Rachel speaking. Welcome to our webinar with Rui Veras, Communications Officer from International Water Association, who will be presenting on the World Reads video. We've just done a quick sound check together and everything seems to be working fine. And I would like to ask everyone who might be having some problems with the sound to check the green volume icon at the top of the screen. Um, there'll be time for questions via the chat bar at the end of the webinar. But during the session, you are welcome to tweet and tag us on social media under hashtag EACD and at EACD online. Um, I will now hand you over to Rui. So hello everyone. Um, my name is Rui Veras. I uh, work at the International Water Association and I'm bringing you today this webinar. So does the world read video? Um, might sound a um, tricky question. Hi, Rui, this is Rachel. Sorry to interrupt you. Can you just check your microphone quickly? So now you should be able to hear me. There we go. <laughs> so I was just, um, well, welcome everyone again. Um, I was um, just telling you about the title of uh, my presentation, The World Reads Video, and uh, how did that come about? So a couple of years ago, I was um, doing my daily commute, like um, most of us do, and I was just browsing my phone, um, watching Facebook, and all of a sudden I'm uh, looking at the video and I think to myself, oh, I'm not only watching this video, I'm actually reading this video. And I was wondering now how many of you have done that as well, and you can raise your hand here via the webinar, there's a little icon for that. Uh, it's a way of us to be more uh, particip participative. Um, I do wonder, I think most of us do that nowadays. And so how did we get here? Mark Zuckerberg, um, I got this quote from him, where he's saying that what is enabling video to become huge right now is that fundamentally the mobile networks are getting to a point where a large enough number of people around the world can have a good experience watching video. So this was not the case a few years ago. Uh, a few years ago, a video would take some time to load, so you would not watch it as you watch nowadays. So it is basically the technology that has enabled us to um, get where we are and that has made video to be such an, in, an important communication medium to communicate with everyone that how we do. So to contextualize this a bit more, uh, this was in 2014 that uh, Facebook pushed uh, his uh, autoplay live. So all of a sudden, you're, you didn't have to click any videos anymore. The videos would just load and play it automatically on your timelines. And in 2019, video will account, according to a prediction from Cisco, or a study rather, that video will account for 80% of global internet traffic. This is, is quite a lot. And so it's good for us to be prepared for that. Uh, another research also reveals that 80% uh, of conversion um, in a page in, was, happened when that page had a video on it. So definitely uh, we have good arguments to focus on video and to include video into our communication strategies and into our communication deliverables. But how do we uh, produce a good video? How does a good video come about? Um, knowing what we want to communicate is the first step, uh, but 
the videos that we have nowadays are a bit different from the news reporting, are a bit different from the TV that uh, we were used, that we used to watch and that we still uh, do watch. Um, so how do we create, how do we develop uh, videos that fit what we want, uh, the stories we want to tell, to communicate what we need to communicate? So let's start, and everything starts with a message. Um, Inga Vala, which you might know from the ACD, says that uh, every uh, there's a few essential elements to a communication strategy, and that's audacity, authenticity, audiences, and you should include in audiences Mother Earth and future generations. Indeed, uh, keeping this in mind will ensure that everything you produce being it video, but also communications at large, will be relevant and will have an impact. Um, my uh, background is in uh, political science, and I actually have to say that that does contribute a lot to define what the right message is, uh, what is that we want to communicate to our audience. And audience is indeed the most important. Audience is the people. The, the target that uh, we want to watch our video. And they can be internal, being it the stakeholders of our organization, uh, also the public. And I included also social media. So key for me in uh, the audience is to think um, how, uh, what are people doing when they watch our message? So who are they and what are they doing when they consume our product? And that's, understanding this will mean that uh, we are able to produce a product that is best suited and targeted at them, at capturing their attention and at having them engaging with our message. So what will our message be? And to define our message, I uh, refer to storytelling. Um, Jonas Tux from uh, Story Wars um, defines, um, based on previous research, of course, but he defines this uh, story strategy map. There's a journey of a hero that um, comes from a broken world, meets um, his mentor, his mentor gives him the brand gift, and with the gift, he goes out to conquer the world, and he will have perils, but eventually he will triumph and he will go into this healed world into the, the future. Uh, you can see here in the image a little scheme and basically if you fill these boxes, uh, you should be able to come up with um, the mission and sometimes the vision of your organization, which also touches upon identity. Uh, it is a digital uh, era. Uh, John Sachs calls it a digital era where Communication nowadays happens from many to many. And it is important uh, to thrive and to be on top of our game in this, in this day and age. What are the new um, communication ways that we have and how do we engage with them? So key to uh, engage is the emotion. Emotion is what will really make people stick to your message. Um, the tone, the style of what you do, and, of course, be iconic. Uh, I added here a few images that show us a spectrum of emotions because, of course, the emotion you want to show depends a lot with the message that you're trying to convey. Um, do you want to engage people in a serious message? Uh, is your goal to be funny? It really depends uh, on what you want to communicate and how do you want to grab people's attention. In any case, if you are iconic, you're more likely to have people, people's attention. And now, the creation. So, how do we go about uh, to creating a video? I usually work with a, produ a production team who is uh, professional in this kind of work. But depending on your experience, on your budget, on your time and the deliverables you assign to yourself, you might better be off investing in a camera with a good stabilization lens. It really all depends on what you want and what are your resources. There's no right formulas. 
that's just the good end result. That should be your goal. Uh, lights, camera, action. And I decided to add lights, camera, sound, and action. Um, in order, uh, the key element to, to this whole process of creation is empathy. I consider that to be the key thing. You have to be empathic and understand who you want to um, either influence, but in case you are filming someone, who that person, you need to involve them. Make the shot and the people in the shot look pretty. Make them feel like they're rock stars. You need to enthuse them. You need to show them passion because that's what you'll need to get back from them. Uh, a good video only happens when the person that is um, recording it is actually uh, active and enthused about what they're saying. But let's start with the lights. So the lights will uh, give you a, a good moment uh, to position the person. And this is the right moment to adjust their hair, to adjust their makeup, tie knots, whatever you have. It's, it's the moment that you can uh, hold and touch the person. And then there's a light schemes. Um, a good light scheme has uh, three points of light in an ideal world. If you have a really big team and if you have a set, but it might, it might be, as happens very often with me, that I actually film at the Congress. So where there's a lot of people around and all I have is a camera with a light. So I'm going to have to find the best angle. And making sure the person is properly illuminated with the best uh, conditions you have, it will, it, it will, that will be the right thing to do. Um, it's important if you try sometimes because of the sound to pull people into a quiet room. Um, in quiet rooms, sometimes you have lights from the ceiling, probably like a bit like there is now where I am. So those lights from the ceiling will create shadows under the eyes, and that's not a good thing. So try to avoid that. Um, you might also want to be careful with natural light because there might be a cloud coming, and this will complicate matters when you are in the editing room. Be also aware of glasses. So glasses will cause reflection on the lights. So it's something to uh, consider. And above all, make sure that the person looks nice and that it fits the tone of the video you want to convey. For example, in the images that you see in the slide, one could say that there's a better image and a less good image. But it really depends on what you want to convey. And uh, I found this image while preparing this presentation is from the Wistia studio. And I thought this could be really interesting for you because it gives you a really good scheme on how to position cameras, the people, and the background. Here as well, you have uh, an image of um, a guy. And it's the same guy, but he's illuminated in two different ways. Again, it's not there is a, a right way and a wrong way. It really depends on what you want to convey. The image with the hard light is certainly more dramatic than the one with the soft light. So if your message is dramatic, maybe you should use the hard light instead. On the scheme, you can also see that whilst on the previous lights scheme, and I'll try to use the drawer here. There we go. So in this light scheme, you have the three lights that are all on the subject itself. So one in front, one on the side, and the other one illuminates just the back without being facing the camera. That's just the, the biggest no-go. That cannot happen. So a light should never be here facing the camera. In this scheme, you have the lights slightly different. So they are both more on the side, but on the front. And one is actually highlighting a background panel. You can see here on this image that the background is slightly lit. So that's, that's this light here that is facing it. This all happens, of course, if you are um, in a studio and if you can record everything in the studio, which is different if uh, you are just recording in a room or in an office or just on the go. Be careful, though, of outdoors, because outdoors can be very tricky, well, especially with the sound. Um, what would you need in terms of a camera? Well, you can have the team, as I said, and they will have all the cameras. They will sort all of that for you. 
But uh, in this digital area that we live, where everything is digital, where things sometimes happen, happen very quickly, you might as well have some ammunition and be prepared to record and even edit uh, that message that happens on the moment. Um, and for that, you can have uh, many different types of cameras. You can have a SLR, you can just have your iPhone. Uh, what is really important here is that you have the correct framing. So I put on purpose the two images here on the screen. They have the grid lines. So these grid lines are very important for you to know where you should place your subject. And that should be in the intersection of them. So either on one side or, or the other, but not in the middle. So place your subject in the intersection of these grid lines. And that will create a better composition. Your image, the framing, uh, will be better. You should also try to uh, give a sense of depth to the image. Have the subject looking inside the frame. So not outside the frame, but inside the frame. And the most important thing is to have the image stable. So have a tripod. And in the case, as it has happened to me, as a, like opportunity is king indeed, um, you might just have uh, your hand. So it's important that the camera has a very good stabilization lens. If there's any investment that I would recommend, it would be on a good camera that has a good stabilization lens. That's what I consider to be very important. Unless, of course, if you have a professional team, you'll be able to do it all different because they will worry with all of that. Um, make sure you like what you see. That, that would be my main advice. And in case you'll be using more than one camera, um, make sure you have a claquette to edit the sound together when you are in the editing room. So the sound. The sound is uh, indeed very important. Um, silence, wind, and the right microphone. So silence is also part of sound. It's important uh, moments of pause. It's important to speak slowly and in the right uh, tone. Uh, you have, want to be very careful with the wind because if you, especially if you're filming outdoors, there will be a lot of wind. And what can help with that is to have the right microphone. Uh, for me, a lapel microphone is always best because of the way it captures sound. So it does not allow for so much noise. My second option would be a camera ga gun microphone, like the one you see in the picture. And when you need to choose a microphone, look for the sound capture spectrum. That's what you want to look for. Uh, to make sure that uh, you're capturing the right sound, plug in your phone to the camera and always double check before you start recording. Again, the outdoors have great scenarios, but they're very hard to film with good sound quality. There is the, the, the wind noise, and this might be not be there in a moment, and the next moment is there already. So these conditions are, are very hard to predict. However, outdoors are great for B-roll, and you always need to illustrate what your speakers are talking about. So finally, here we are in the action. How do we go uh, around to filming and to capture the content? Uh, of course, one thing is uh, static content. And the other thing is if you decide to interview someone. So prepare. Prepare a narrative that relates to what you're looking at. Um, remember that um, when you want action, you have a reaction. So if you are interviewing someone, be friendly, but be serious. Above everything, remember that the person will react to you because you will be interviewing the person or prompting the person. If you have time, prepare the person beforehand. So send her, send her an email and prepare the questions beforehand. But sometimes you also don't want to make the person overly nervous. So the spontaneity of the moment is also very good and often the best. Uh, something that you want to pay attention to is, um, I write here, capture concepts, concepts instead of impressions and relevant information. So when you are interviewing people, it's good to think about the people that are going to be watching the clip. 
and they're not going to be watching the clip while at if in case you would be at an event or in the office um, they're not going to be watching the clip there they're going to be watch the clip most often on their mobile devices or behind their desks so you need to speak to that moment it is important that the person that you're capturing speaks to that moment too therefore i try to avoid concepts of time and I try to have my viewers going straight to the relevant information. Um, if you don't have time to prepare, often what I ask is, uh, what is your name and affiliation? So that I can always trace back the person. And then I ask, why are you here? And often I start uh, the editing uh, in process from here. After the person says, I'm here because, so I cut this out. And then when they go indeed into what they're actually talking about. And if the person will still not give you um, the answer that you want, you can always ask them, why is it relevant? Why is it important? And there, usually, you will get the good content. So think of the edition when you're filming. When you're filming, you should have a good idea about what you want and what is the tone that the person is giving you. If you are doing this edition in, while you're capturing, it will be much easier afterwards, and especially because you will capture the right content. If you were uh, unprepared, and sometimes you don't even know what the message is supposed to be, uh, you first let the person go on on what they can potentially report about. And if you're not convinced about the way they say it, you can always say, can you say that again in a shorter way? Thank you. I do that very often. Uh, and sometimes it really helps in having the speaker condensing what they said because videos online and nowadays have a very short uh, attention span as I will show you later on. However, there's many different kinds of videos. So if you have a video with an interview, you will want to um, have things that relate to what the viewer is saying as B-roll and this will help you very much in the editing process. And if you want to create a video just for social media, you might not even need a speaker at all, and you might, you might just need footage. So how do you capture this footage? It's very important. Um, you might find surprising, but it's very hard to hold the camera still for periods of 30 seconds. But this is something you will need to do. If you want, uh, you can use a slider to pan or tilt, and this means uh, moving the camera slightly. But you will need more still images than this moving images. It all depends also on the style that you want to put in your video. Uh, next, you will need to record, and that's why I added the illustration here, wide and close-up plans. So when you will be editing, you need a close-up plan and then a wide plan, and then a close-up, and then a wide. So you need to intersect them. So that this, and usually they should be re related or not, you will just have to see how it feels to you, if it feels natural or not. Here again, you might have an editor that does it all for you, but it's good to have these notions, even if you have an editor, so that you know how, how will your finished product look like and what is the best way to go about it. Um, in case you are recording an interview and you don't have um, so many other materials that actually speak to what the speaker is saying, you can just decide to have a close-ups uh, to the hands or to the eyes. So try to take the mouth out so that you can then edit the speech differently from what is being said. Um, you can also have a different feature where you have uh, the, the movement. You can have like people walking and you can, so you can just record them. And usually this happens after the interview in case you would be in an interview. And it is staged, but that's how that's how we produce videos. So the edition. The edition is certainly the magic moment. Once you have everything captured comes uh, the magic. Creating the story that is visually appealing and expresses the right message is not such an easy task, but it can certainly be a fun one to do. You can try um, software like Final Cut Pro or again, work with an editor. I personally use Final Cut Pro. Um, people that would be more skilled would use Adobe Premiere, which is um, very good. I mean, they do both the same. I could say that Final Cut is more user-friendly, but that maybe is just because of the way I started. And I actually started with iMovie, 
that is just the standard software that comes uh, with a Mac. And I learned there, and then from there, I actually evolved uh, into the final cut. So start simple. Simple, uh, less is more. So it is definitely is a good thing. Um, in the less is more and starting simple, try to have one message per video clip. That is essential. Lenty videos have fewer views. You want to engage the viewer around one theme, around one message. So talk about that message only. Videos that touch upon several points might be able to make uh, several points come across, but that will be trickier. And in nowadays, in the digital era, cut the intros and go straight in the action. Go straight to the content. Start with what is interesting. Online, uh, people have an attention spam of three seconds. You either grab them immediately because the content is relevant and talks to them, or they will navigate away. Of course, that if you are in a corporate environment and it's a message from uh, the CEO, you might have a different leverage uh, if you're doing internal communications, for example, you might have a different leverage because people will want to hear it. But even so, people are at their work, so they have to be efficient. They have, there is no time to waste. So remember that and keep that and always edit out uh, the intros, especially the welcomes and the very formal things that really don't add anything to who is behind that desk watching a video. And use catching visuals and subtitles if you're doing a social media video. Remember that if you're watching a video on your phone, you will not um, hear it unless you actually tap it. So again, it's important that the social media video starts immediately with the text so that you can read it immediately and make this message be a story. So rather than loose sentences, make sure that it reads as a story so that you have, you have the viewer wanting to know what comes next. And by all means, I think that always the best, uh, the best test is ourselves. If you like it, there's a big chance other people will too. Very important in the editing room, edit out the phonetical expressions. So all the, um, what will I be saying now? Clean the speech of your interviews, if you are doing it in the interview style. And this is where the B-roll really comes in handy. Uh, you will be able with, to, with the B-roll to disguise all these cuts that you have to do, and you have to do it uh, sometimes more, sometimes less. Uh, CEOs usually are very good with their speeches, and they don't have ums and all these fanatical uh, expressions, and so they'll certainly be much easier to record. And sometimes you just even record it straight at the first time, and you have it all clean, and it's very easy to just have a finished and deliver the product. You might not even need B-roll at all. But in case the person that you are filming, if you are filming a person is not so used to media and might not feel so comfortable, you might have, you might have to edit heavily what they're saying. So then you know why you need the B-roll for. Now, now that our video is complete, comes the delivery and the feedback. So this is the process where you will distribute your video. And as we will see afterwards, what do you make of the feedback that you get from the video? So the distribution. Uh, nowadays, there's many ways to distribute. We're talking about something that we use mostly online. Uh, you can also project your videos. And those will be for an audience that is sitting in a the room. There you have more leverage in terms of um, having a, a longer intro, not having to start straight away because people are sitting in a room and so they will be obliged to watch. But that's not the common and that's not how I recommend to make videos. Uh, in the distribution, while uh, YouTube is the mainstream video channel that everyone uses, that is considered to be most used, I actually recommend to use Vimeo. Why? Very simple. Uh, Vimeo, uh, when you upload a video to Vimeo, it creates a page and you can always replace your video on Vimeo. And imagine that you have created a video, you upload it, then you distribute it, 
or you send it even if it's just for approval, you send it to several people. If you are distributing a YouTube video, and if something is wrong in the video and you need to replace it, or even if you have feedback on something that needs changing, you will need to upload another video, but it, you will have another URL, a different URL. So you'll have to share the URL again. With Vimeo, you only have one URL. So the URL will always work, and this makes everyone's life much easier. So Vimeo really is what I recommend for professional use of video and to distribute uh, your videos, to embed them in websites. On top of it, they have a very highly customi customizable um, platform, so you can adapt the colors, you can put your logo. I really think uh, Vimeo for professional use highly supplants uh, the value that you get from YouTube. And of course, I mean, uh, email is still king. We are all still uh, look at our email inboxes and that's where we get more serious information. So again, it really depends uh, the tone or what are you, you are producing your video for. If it's just an ad, you probably have it playing on Facebook or more the social networks. If it's a serious message that uh, if you have an annual report that rather than a lengthy written document, you just want to have a short three, five minute clip, and that's a very long clip already, you might as well do it, do it with, with a video. And it was just gonna be um, maybe even more engaging. And of course, have it on a web page, um, complete the rest uh, with other information that is always relevant it doesn't have to be exactly the same information that you speak about in the video, but it can be complementary to it. Right, so I collected some statistics. Um, there was a survey done to 6,000 marketing professionals, so not necessarily comms professionals, but our profession is uh, sometimes mixed. Um, and these people, these 6,000 people, said that they were planning uh, to use and to add a video channel in the next 12 months. 50% of them is thinking of adding YouTube and Facebook channels for video distributioning in the year ahead. And 33% listed visual content created like video as a top priority in the year ahead. So don't miss uh, the, the race. I mean, clearly, uh, video is important. Uh, every major organization nowadays have a series of videos to tell their stories. Um, you can use it in internal comms, and where the border between internal and external comms is nowadays, it's also blurring. It's good to know the stories of the people behind the brands, behind the products. Everyone is interested in that, and that comes a lot from storytelling to enable your heroes, which, which is your audience, enable them to um, tell your story and sometimes capture their own stories, capture them telling your story. You have way more uh, value from that. And if you think on uh, how, how should you distribute it, you can see uh, that blog and video, how do they work together? So um, HubSpot, did also a study on that and uh, their conclusions, their, their key conclusions were that uh, YouTube average watch time was 41 seconds of a one minute 14 second video. So here you can see you really have to be short and you have to be, there's no point in doing long videos because you will, it's just not going to get watched or listened to. Uh, they also think that YouTube contributed to more blog traffic than Facebook video. But this was, of course, on uh, people that were actually using uh, YouTube as a platform, as opposed to uh, embedding a video on uh, your, your blog already or the, your website. As of video published on Facebook, and that's the video that most of us uh, watch nowadays, uh, the video featured B-roll and animations instead of talking heads, and it performed very well. In fact, it was so informative that it stood on its own and it didn't in impact blog traffic so much. So this means that people were getting all the information they needed and they didn't even click through. On the other hand, on Instagram, it seems that there's uh, a big percentage of click through from blog posts. And I mean, the list can go on in terms of new social media platforms where you can distribute video 
Of course, you also have Snapchat, which is with live videos. It's not something that I recommend uh, for a professional use, but suddenly there is a space there as well to be filled. And my advice there is to try out the platform and find your style. Find the style that fits your organization, that fits your audience, and then you will um, use that medium. Uh, and you will be successful with it or not, depending if your audience is using it or not. Um, I added here a link to an Instagram account called, called uh, Penaligon's Portraits. It's from a perfume brand. And the reason I put it here is because there is no video on it. Um, but it's a game. And I really liked um, the use they did of that social media platform. Uh, just with the tools that were available, you, they created an experience that goes well beyond the normal use of an Instagram account. And that would be my recommendation for the likes of uh, Snapchat, Vines, all the different social media platforms, tools and technologies that appear nowadays and that I recommend always experimenting. The report. So we have distributed our video. Our video is out there. We've sent it by email. We put it on Facebook. It's rolling out. How is it performing? It's very important to understand what works and what doesn't. And statistics is the place to get there. There's no right formulas. And so um, every case, uh, time moves on the scale and uh, doesn't really go back. Uh, so all we can do is learn with our mistakes and improve. Therefore, I think analyzing our statistics is very important, not to correct the video that was done already, but to do better in the future. In the slide that I show you, you can see um, on the top, there is still a, a little bit of, um, let me use the arrow again. So here, this was the video that I did, and you can see the engagement. Most of everyone watch it at the beginning, but then fewer people watch it at the end. So this is the dropout rate. So people stop watching it. The video was long. It doesn't mean that um, I intended it to be watched. This was a particular video with a specific message that had to be this long. You can then see here, and I wrote for you to understand uh, what are the plays, the finishes. Obviously, when someone finishes a video, the impressions is every time that a video is loaded. So the, the videos you see here are embedded in web pages. Every time that web page loads, that video loads as well. Whether someone clicks it or not, that would be the place. And then you can see the percentage of the average time that was watched the video. And this, these ones did quite well, apart from this one where there was a, a dropout rate that was much bigger. You can see here that nearly 600 people played it, but only 24 finished it. So this means this video was too long. I copy here another report of a different video that is not here, but this video on a specific day at 46 plays. However, only 12 of these people finished. So what this tells us is that this video was too long. It's important to condense the message and to make it shorter and more appealing at the beginning. You Again, I like to emphasize this. People have very short attention spans and very little time. And you want to use people's time the best way possible. So my uh, webinar presentation uh, is concluded. I hope uh, you have enjoyed. And now, if you have uh, any questions, just let me know. So I'm going to read some of the questions that I see here on this chat. Oh, I see you had some trouble with the connection. I'm so sorry for that.
I hope the sound is sorted now. Well, there will be a recording anyway, so you can watch it that, and I hope I was not too long. So I see here a question, what reporting tools do you recommend? Uh, well, the tools you saw are actually were statistics uh, from Vimeo itself. And I usually just use the, the tools that I get from the platforms that I use. You also get uh, some very good insights from Facebook. But of course, you can always get um, Google Analytics and you can have other reporting tools. But I really use just the Vimeo ones. So I have here another question. If I can recommend techniques on how to condense complex messages into short videos. So um, I have a tip for that. And that's five fingers. Sometimes I have to interview people and not even I have a clear brief on what I'm supposed to um, capture there. So I let them roll. I ask them, uh, there'll, there'll always be a minimum framing on what they're saying. But sometimes they were also not prepared, so the message might sound very complex. There is uh, the house method where you would have a top, the goal that you want to communicate, and then you have three arguments that sustain that. And the basis of the house is actually um, facts and examples. So you can use that method to distill the message if you have time for preparation. But if you don't have time for preparation, what I often do, I just think, OK, you told me so many things. Uh, Use your fingers so that you don't forget the, all the points you want to say, whether they're three, whether they're two, whether they're five, and focus all these points. So how to make the message more simple? That would be that you should really just focus on one message per video. So you'll have to make concessions. If you want to tell a lengthy story, maybe you need to find what is the common element that binds it all together so that there can be a narrative that talks about it all. Let me see other questions. So um, tips on filming with iPhone plus microphone, cheap and cheerful. There we go. So I've been very against people thinking that they can do uh, very good videos with phones. And often you have uh, your CEOs thinking that, well, you know, people have iPhones nowadays, so they can just go in the field and produce all these exceptional videos. That is not quite the case. But you can still do a decent video with a phone. All you need uh, to be is skilled and just have taste, really. So make sure that the phone really is stable. So you need to invest on a, on a, a tripod or just have the phone landing on something that it doesn't move. Get the framing right, as I said. The microphones fit just as well the iPhones as they fit the cameras. The jack is exactly the same then you can have a lapel microphone and there you go in principle you're all set hold your phone horizontally that will be key to having what can look as a good quality video and do not um, think about the image the image really has to be good having a good image is key to keep people's attention and engagement of the video and to, sh to make sure that it is professional and that the person that is speaking in it also sounds professional. So I'm going to move to the next question. And it says here, in case Vial um, Shleslav, I hope I'm saying your name correctly, probably not. Uh, he asks, or she asks, in case you outsource video production completely, how would you estimate if their work is good? That's a very good question. So I'm actually working with a team and I work with them uh, for quite some time because I know their work is good. So once you corner something, someone is important to, to, to keep them. But how would you know? How would you assess? Well, that really has to go on a um, try because if you work with an editor, for example, you need to make sure that he is aligned and that he understands what you want from, uh, from him and what you want edited. And that can be with a written brief or you can just be sitting next to them. I really find that knowing, having a basic skill of editing really helps me understanding what's possible. So 
if I'm asking an editor to do something, I know what is possible to do or not. So that really helps in, in the work relationship with them. But I've, uh, I've worked abroad with people that didn't even speak so good English, so communication was indeed difficult. And in that case, it was more of um, almost a activa voice-activated uh, edition too, <laughs> uh, rather than uh, having someone that I could just uh, give the work to and I would have the product. You, I think the key for that really is in the briefing. It's uh, the briefing, the written briefing, and the connection that you establish with the people. Always check other works that they have done and be sure that they were the ones doing it. And then you can have a good idea of what they can produce, what is their style, what they can do. I would say that really is the best to match um, what you want with uh, what, uh, what you need to produce. And of course, one thing is for interviews. Another thing is also for other kinds of videos like animations, like corporate videos. Watch what the producer has produced and then you will see the style that you would uh, get. So, are there any other questions? Oh, I see another one. Could you give a few tips on filming an interview from different angles? So, um, I'm trying to understand what you mean here with different angles. Um, you would use two cameras, of course. And um, to start with, you need to align the sound. So that's when I mentioned uh, behind on my presentation that you need a claquette. A claquette can just be this. If you do this, when you have the two cameras filming, you'll have a sound point that you can match afterwards. And if you have this, then it's very easy to just use the image that you want. Uh, how would you put the angles filming? So usually you have an angle that is frontal and then you can have another angle that is um, completely on the side. You can have a wider angle. I really like to work with wider angles so I can see the full person. So I film the person, I film a framing that has the face and the top of the chest, pretty much as you see me here now, uh, right on this camera. And then I like another framing where, where I have the person just sitting on a chair in the middle of an empty room, and I can see the full body of the person sitting in the chair. So I have these two camera rollings, rolling, and then I um, alternate between the, the frames that I want. This helps greatly as well with editing so I can then uh, adapt the speech to what I want. And then again, at the end, I still produce the B-roll, so the hand details that I don't have the, their face, so that you can also use that as B-roll to then compose the image. Did that uh, answer your question? I could have done a few more slides on the, on the different camera framings. Um, the, of course, you have uh, you can have one that is very short and narrow, just the eyes and the mouth, and you can have another one that you cut the hair out and just on the chin. Then you have another one that you can see already above the head, and then you have the chest, and this gradually increases. I think in terms of angles, make sure that it looks good. That will be the best. Um, make sure that it looks. Uh, in a way as you have seen it elsewhere. Uh, there's nothing wrong with copying. So see something you like, and that also helps uh, in um, explaining briefing editors. If you see something you like, say, uh, give it to an editor and say like, look, I want to produce something like this. Then they will know exactly uh, what to do. I see some more people uh, are typing some questions. So uh, let's see, maybe there's some... Uh... Okay, you are very welcome. Uh, it's my pleasure. We didn't try the little uh, hands raising, but that would have been interesting. Thank you. Well, I wonder whether if you have uh, any other questions, um, whether being it about commissioning, for example, I was wondering if you would have questions about budget, because I also didn't include any budgeting information. But that, for example, is something that can vary so greatly. I mean, you can do a, vid a good video with a very small budget is a question of taste. So play with what you have. 
I once, for example, uh, had to launch uh, a product. It was an internal software. It was actually an internet platform. And I had done already so many different videos. So I thought, okay, I need to be iconic. I need to do something different. So what I decided to do then was I draw in paper and I did uh, what I think is called a stop motion. So I draw, uh, uh, I made the drawings. I took many pictures and then I make that move. So it was a sort of um, homemade animation. But it was a different format. So that would uh, have people watching it. And I think that's really uh, the, 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 the key element. Be iconic. Your viewers will want to watch different things at all times. My top tips for writing a brief. So... Um, most of the tips that you see online, they advise you to use a storyboard and to create a storyboard. Whilst it's very hard to create a storyboard if you are on the go, so if you are just at a conference or an exhibition or at a very busy event, you have no time to do any storyboard. But if you have time to create a concept video, then you want to make a storyboard. Uh, you want to know all the different images that all your message is there, and that will be very much the same as uh, writing a story. So you need to know what you want to communicate. You need to define uh, in your communication strategy what is your vision, what is your mission. So define what is your North Star, what is uh, your brand gift. If you define this, then you know what you want to communicate. Once you know what to communicate, then you just have to be creative. And creativity happens when you have time and often with, uh, with your team. Talk with your team, brainstorm with people, be inspired, be inspired by a, by a movie, by a book, by nature, by anything. Um, look at the details. The details are super important and uh, you can draw a lot of inspiration from there. Uh, if there are there more structured ways of writing a brief, you need to make sure that you include uh, all, all the elements as well about style. But again, here I recommend if if you have seen your concept of something similar to what you want somewhere, include that in the brief. That will be the key for whomever is creating a product for you, knowing what they should create and have a good understanding with them. Uh, can I go through how I plan and disseminate your videos? So that really depends on the videos I have to disseminate. Uh, I'm just, for example, uh, back from a conference where my output was 18 videos. And these videos, I did uh, a summary of the conference that framed it. And then I actually recorded the full keynotes. And then I recorded some interviews. So the keynotes I'm actually having distributed on Facebook as a live video. So it's streaming live uh, from, it's not a real live stream, but I am pushing them out as they are live videos. They are long, so it will need to have people engaged. We're going to have them uh, rolled out during a week as a series, every day one at a uh, assigned time to see if that promotes engagement. So test and try. Be creative again. See the, the means you have available. Um, then these videos will also all live in a web page. In that web page, I will put mostly the interviews. It will be harder for people um, to watch a 17 minute video about a presentation. They can still do it. I'm not saying that they won't, but you also want to have the short and sweet clips there that whomever is just visiting the page can quickly click and hear something about what's being said there. So that's how I would, uh, that's what I will do, for example, for this project that I've just been to. And um, this means that you have the, the, so you have one summary that encompasses everything. I also had one social media video, so just with images and text that I used to promote the, the event there. And then post event, I'm having the keynotes recorded for really deep content. And then I also have a series of small short interviews. Some of the interviews relate to the keynote. So I have a short interview to promote the longer keynote and some other interviews uh, will just stand on their own. And some of them are even about the keynote. I find that to be of more value than the actually keynote because the keynote re means that someone needs to have time to sit behind their desk and listen. And if you don't have that time, then you might just want to watch a video of two minutes and you, you have the highlights of the presentation. Uh, experience with 
uh, live streaming. So live streaming is not very easy, but it's not so complicated either. Um, what I am, there's two ways that I know of for live streaming. Uh, one way is, for example, here in my organization, we uh, have a webinar platform called Zoom that we use, and we can just use that platform to live stream the video. However, when you do it that way, there will be a frame around the video on Facebook so and, and the Zoom logo. But it's a compromise. It's much easier. The other way is you get a link to initiate the, the live uh, streaming. You will get the code uh, into a software of which there are others, but I use OBS. I put my video there, so I look up the file. And then I uh, sort of make the connection and start the live streaming. Uh, you should not be doing anything else while you're doing the, the live streaming. You shouldn't touch your computer just to be sure that uh, it doesn't, the connection doesn't fall off and that you know exactly when it ends so that you can uh, end the connection as well. Other than that, you can actually do a real live streaming. So uh, use your phone or use a camera and have it at the live event and push it live. I've, I've been to many events that I just uh, watched it live like the next web in Amsterdam, which is a big web event that is very interesting. And I watch it for a while. I mean, as long as it was interesting, I did certainly watch it. I like more polished products. So uh, broadcasting live uh, can also mean that something can go wrong and then you're broadcasting. So it really depends on the kind of event uh, that you are broadcasting. Maybe if we are broadcasting uh, a president giving a, a speech, you should just broadcast it anyway. Um, but if you do corporate communications in the sense of your ten if you are tending to the image of your of, of your CEOs or of the people you work with, then you might want to have it a bit more polished, especially if you evaluate their uh, speaking skills. So tips about the next question is tips about um, asking good questions without preparation. I certainly can. I have something written on the notes of my presentation, and I think it will be available for you to download afterwards. My three questions are always, so if I don't know anyone at all, I don't, I've never met the person before, I will ask them, um, what, what is your name? And uh, where do you come from? Uh, who brought you here? Well, who are you here representing? Because someone might have different affiliations. Uh, the blurred picture that you see now on the screen uh, was a Matt Damon lookalike that I uh, saw in Australia. I didn't really have anything to ask him, so I just decided to do a spontaneous interview because I thought it would be funny. So I asked him exactly that. Uh, what is, uh, what's your name? What's your affiliation? And uh, why are you here? And then some people uh, might be more funny than others and they might uh, go, well, I'm here because the weather is very good and the food is very nice. Of course, that's not what you want to hear and that's not what you want to capture. But let them go at it. Let them tell that story. And eventually they'll come to the good story. If they don't, just ask them, so why is it relevant for you to be here? Why is this event relevant for you to be here? In case, this, of course, in a, in, if you are in an event, um, if they have told a story and you find no relevance in it, just ask them directly. So why is it relevant? Just uh, be very blunt, be nice and polite, but be very blunt and just ask uh, the people directly um, to explain why is it relevant? Why is it important? That's what I do. So I'm... Um, let me see if there's any other questions. I hope I hope I have answered well. I don't know uh, if you wanted uh, any more detail. Uh, you're welcome. Uh, in terms of questions, really, um, you can. It really depends on, on on the message that you want to communicate. I thought I saw someone else typing a question. Great. Uh, thank you so much. Uh, it's uh, It's been great as well. I hope you enjoyed. I hope uh, I was really trying to be quick, uh, giving the same advice that I uh, preach. I really try to be quick because I think um, if something is to be successful, it doesn't have to be lengthy and it certainly has to be engaging. It certainly has to have emotion into it. So be iconic, put emotion into it and um, keep rolling, keep filming. <laughs> Thank you.
Hi, this is Rachel from the EACD team. I would echo everything that Rui said. You also just gave us a masterclass on how to um, successfully present live. So thank you for the fantastic presentation. And also thank you to our participants for the really informative, um, well thought out questions and Rui's great spontaneous answers at the end. All EACD members will receive the recording afterwards and you're welcome to pass on any feedback to me or Rui. More importantly, if you'd like to host a webinar yourself, then get in touch with me and we can start planning and I hope you feel inspired by Rui's webinar. Thank you and have a lovely evening.